To get started, you want to learn how to build your own electrodes. If you purchased a rubber roach kit from us, we included a few electrodes pre-assembled for you. But as you become more advanced and doing more and more experiments, you're going to want to learn how to build your own. We take the common electrical component, the header, which you can buy from DigiKey or Mouser, and cut them into three connector segments. Then you want to carefully sand each side of the header so that it will become greedy, which will make it easier to glue, which you will understand very soon why we do that. I've sped up the sanding process in the interest of time. To interface with the cockroach nervous system, we use very fine silver wire from AM Systems. This is 0 .003 inches in diameter, and you want to cut three separate pieces of each approximately being one to one and a quarter inches in length. Using a lighter, now burn off approximately one eighth inch of the Teflon insulation off the silver wire segments you just made. This requires a bit of finesse, as if you hold the wire too close, you can actually melt the silver. Do this for both ends of each wire segment you cut. Now to solder the fine silver wire to the connector, we use a standard Radio Shack product with 2% silver in it. We make the silver wire into a loop, and we lay all three across the three connector segments. Now grab your favorite soldering iron and solder the three wires to the three connectors. Make sure each connection is distinct and that there are no shorts. And voila, you've now made your electrode. Now it's time for the biology. Take your colony of cockroaches, grab your largest discoid, and put them in the ice water. The ice water serves as the anesthetic. After a few minutes, he will stop moving and will be ready for the next step. Now the reason cockroaches are such experts at getting into very, very small places is that their whole body is covered with a very slippery wax, which is very, very difficult to glue to. Thus, we're going to sand a little bit of this wax off of his pronotum. Now we're going to glue the connector. The superglue we enjoy is the Loctite Superglue Control Gel. It's not as runny as normal cyanoacrylate and very, very easy to control. Glue a little bit on his pronotum. Now, carefully place the connector onto the cockroach, with the solder points pointing towards the anterior end. The connection will be strong enough within one to two minutes. Now for the hardest step of the surgery. I have not figured out an easier way to do this. You need to put your ground wire into the thorax of the cockroach. Carefully splay one of his wings and secure it with silly putty. Now wipe off the excess water from the ice water anesthesia off his thorax with a Q-tip. Now again, since we're at a glue step, we're going to lightly sand the waxy coating of the thorax with a small bit of sandpaper. And with our Q-tip, we're going to again soak up the excess moisture from the ice water anesthesia. Now with a small needle, you can buy these at the drugstore, you want to lightly poke the exoskeleton of his thorax. Now very carefully place the lefternmost wire, park it in the small hole you just made in the thorax. This is a very, very hard step to do as the wire will easily crumple on itself. You may find this takes multiple attempts to get it parked. Now, with a splinter of wood, take a small piece of superglue and place it on the wire just above where it goes into the thorax. You may find using a magnifying glass helps you. While I was shooting this video, it was easier for me not to use it. 
So I've put just a little bit of glue right above where it's parked. And then with my forceps, I'm carefully lowering the wire about one to three millimeters below the surface so that it's in contact with the saline of the body. I put a little bit more super glue on top of where I just inserted it, remove the silly putty, and fold the wing back over to its natural position. Now is a good time to put the cockroach back in ice water anesthesia for a couple minutes. Now it's time to insert the antenna stimulating wires. Using your forceps, splay the antenna out. And then, with your scissors, cut the antenna down to with only 1 8 to 1 quarter inch left. The antenna are hollow, fluid-filled structures with a nerve running down the center. Now you're going to position the middlemost wire to go into the cockroach left side. Park it just into the antenna. Don't put it all the way in. Now, as you did before, apply a little bit of super glue to the wire just above where you parked it. And then using your forceps, put the wire approximately 2 to 4 millimeters into the antenna. The point is to get the super glue just inside the inner ring of the antenna so it sticks on the inside. Otherwise, it will slip out very easily. Put some more super glue around the antenna wire interface, and now put the cockroach back in the ice anesthesia. After a couple minutes, then repeat for the remaining antenna and the remaining wire. Be careful not to touch the superglue with your fingers, as it will very easily glue to you instead of the cockroach or the silver. Now you're almost done. Put the cockroach back in the ice water anesthesia and wait a couple minutes before proceeding to the next step. Now it's time to clean up all the excess wire so the cockroach can't pull the wires out. Carefully fold back all the wires until they're in a nice loop on top of the connector. It's important that the distance between the antenna and the connector be as short as possible so the cockroach can't reach his forearm in between the loop and potentially pull the wires out. This is a principal failure point that took a while to figure out. Notice I have made my best effort to have all the excess wire tightly compact and organized on top of the connector. Now to hold the excess wire in place, place a dab of hot glue on top of the connector. Now to make the hot glue spread evenly on the connector and hold all the wires in place, I have coated the end of my forcep with baking soda and press the forcep gently onto the hot glue. The baking soda prevents the hot glue from sticking to the forcep. After a couple seconds, I gently lift up the forcep and it comes off quite easily. Look how nicely organized it is now. But how do I know if my surgery was any good? If I have a spiker box, I can actually try to record the neural responses in the antenna. That tells me the surgery was successful. I've plugged in my little adapter into the connector. I'll then plug in my micro clips one to the ground and one to the left antenna, and turn the spiker box on. It sounds a bit noisy, so I'm going to turn off all the fluorescent lights to reduce line interference. That semi-random popping you're hearing is the spiking, or action potentials, of the living neurons in the antenna. I'll try the other side and check as well. The other side sounds good as well. Great neural response. 
Now it's time for the cockroach to recover. I'll simply put him in his cockroach house and wait, usually, overnight. However, if I'm teaching in a classroom and I want him to recover faster, I have a tub of warm water and I put the cockroach in a tub on top of the warm water and it'll recover within maybe half an hour. Now to test your rubber roach. Take your rubber roach circuit and turn it on by pushing the switch all the way to the right. Make sure your transmitter is on the B channel and press the L and R buttons. If the lights on either side turn on, you know it's working. It's time to plug in the cockroach. Notice that nice wing flapping behavior when I pick him up by the connector. That's a fairly stereotyped behavior that students like to observe to wonder about the mechanics of wing flapping. Now that he's on the table, simply plug in the connector gently. But how do we get it to stay on the cockroach? Take your hot glue again and put a small dab on the underside. and then stick the package firmly on the center of the cockroach. It's not too hot, don't worry, the cockroach is fine. Now place the cockroach on the floor, and when he starts running, start stimulating the left and right sides and see what you observe. How long do the behaviors last? Does he always turn left and right upon stimulation? Does the cockroach appear to show any sort of learning or adaptation upon repeated stimulation? Are you competing with any other sorts of behaviors? There are many types of questions you can ask about stimulation and your responses with this simple prep. You're done with your experiment. It's time for the cockroach to go back into his house to eat and rest. Put him in the refrigerator to slow him down a bit. And then with your forceps, carefully ease the connector from the stimulator package and slowly peel it off. And put the cockroach back in its house. Sorry for that unsightly scar in my hand. I was changing the oil in my cell last weekend. Busted knuckles. Now you can start asking independent questions of your own. For example, from your neural engineering class, are biphasic pulses better than direct voltage? Here I've designed a roboroach where I'm solely providing positive three volts to the antenna. And you can notice there's very little effect on the cockroach turning. This tells us that pulses designed to mimic action potentials are actually more effective. Now here's a confusing result. We have a different species of cockroach, the giant South American fuchsia cockroach. And when you stimulate his left and right antenna, he simply stops. It's more of a break. Why is this? Is there a behavioral reason? Or a stimulation reason? And eventually, the cockroach just ignores it and keeps walking upon stimulation. We're still trying to figure this out.